Hey guys, Chad Wesley Smith here from Juggernaut Train Systems. Want to talk to you guys about the role of practice in training your football players. Some of the most common questions I get are how to adjust training uh, in the in season period, spring football, summer football, training camp, whenever it may be. Uh, but obviously, practice is the most critical thing for the success of a football player. Um, so we need to account for it in the in the whole training process. I think one of the biggest mistakes that coaches make when trying to prepare their football players is they compartmentalize the ideas of football practice and training, like lifting and sprinting, as two separate things. But your body doesn't know what a squat is or a bench or a you know, inside run or a sprint, any of those things. All it knows is stress and stimulus. All right, so we need to look at the whole training process as as one uh, cohesive unit that in, that includes practice, lifting, sprinting, you know, speed training, conditioning, everything that that's training. All of that together is training. So so that's the first step in, in doing this right is we can't compartmentalize those I, those ideas. Um, so as as we look at that whole training process process, it's important that we track the volume and intensity of all the work that we're doing. It's very common for coaches, you know, to count sets and reps in the in the weight room, maybe track their their weekly and monthly load and and volume, but it's much much more rare for them to do that same thing with uh, with practice drills. But like I said, you know, practice provides a huge stimulus to the to the athlete that can help them that can help them get stronger. It can help them get faster, but if mismanaged, it can also you know cause their strength to deteriorate, cause cause them to get slower, cause them to become overtrained. So it's really important that we that we track all of all of those process, all right? Uh, because everything provides a stress to the body, um, and and it all provides a stimulus to, to help the athlete improve. We we need to look at that holistic process to, to help our, our guys improve. So when you're tracking the volume of, of practice, a couple of important things that you want to consider, uh, because it is a little bit more difficult to quantify exactly, like you know weight on a bar or distance and speed of a sprint. Um, you know, without the use of some pretty high-tech, expensive GPS technology, it's much harder to track the actual workload of practice. So you, what I would suggest doing is, is one of two things, either just assigning practice as like a hard, medium, or, or light practice, or assigning an RPE, a rate of perceived exertion to, to practice, on a scale of 1 to 10. Um, and when you're, when you're looking at those things, the, some of the most important things to consider is the amount of hitting you did that practice. So if you guys are in full pads, going full speed, you know, taking guys to the ground, that's obviously going to be a much more stressful practice than just shells or, or uh, you know, helmets only. Um, how much full speed uh, team drills did you do? Uh, you know, that's going to be the most demanding things on the, on the players are, are going to be 7 on 7 and 11 on 11 drills. And also look at the distances that you're recovering covering during practice. Uh, you know, as if it was a lot of inside run period, um, that's going to be less stressful um, from a speed distance standpoint for for your skill players than a lot of seven on seven. Uh, but it won't really vary for the linemen as they're going to be moving about the same distances all the time. The only thing that might be different is if you get into an outside run or a screen period where the linemen are having to to sprint a lot more. Um, so the adjustments that, that we want to make uh, with this knowledge is if we have higher intensity practices, all right, then we need to take something away because you can't just keep adding work and compounding work on top of on top of the athlete. So if we're doing more in practice, we need to do a little bit less in the general training. So you know, if you had a, an eight or nine or 10 or a high intensity practice and you were planning on going into the weight room after and, and squatting for five sets of five, Maybe you back it off to three sets of five or two sets of five, um, but it's important that you that you adjust uh, the loads to reflect each other. And the different parts of the year, uh, you're going to have a little bit different priority. Obviously, in season practice is of the absolute most importance, and you know you don't want to take anything away from the practice there. So, so if you have a nine or a ten difficulty practice, you're going to you know back it off in the weight room. Or you know, maybe earlier in the year, spring spring football or, or even pre-spring drills where you're placing a little bit high, higher priority on your athlete's strength and speed, um, then maybe you, you do take a little bit away from practice so you can get everything done in, in the general physical training that you that you wanted to do. But uh, as, as you look at, at higher priority practice periods like training camp and, and in-season, two things to, to really consider 
with the training of your players is that your goal in the weight room should be to help improve that athlete's durability and you know, to get them through the season healthy. Of, of course, preventing injuries is, is one of our main goals in the entire training process of athletes, but particularly in season, you know, an, an injured athlete, no matter how strong or fast they are, is going to be worthless to you if they're sitting on the sideline. Um, and the, the other thing to really consider with the in-season training is that you want to avoid competing for technical resources. So, you know, I talk a lot about the value of special strength drills and, uh, you know, the importance of transfer of training and, and training your football players um, and, and using these special strength exercises. But special strength exercises are not necessarily the best thing to use in season. Uh, you know, an overhead forward medicine ball throw is a great tool to develop the throwing muscles in your, in your quarterback. But if you're trying to do those a lot in season, because they're not exactly throwing a football, they might actually throw off your athlete's mechanics. So you want to reserve those special strength exercises for farther away from the season. And then as you move, move to the competitive part of the year, you want to use only the most specific drills, which are, of course, are going to be sport practice. All right. Also, as you get into periods of, of high practice volume, this is really the time that we want to use passive recovery means, whether that be ice baths, uh, st stem, stem and ice, contrast showers, soft tissue therapy. All right, in season is the time to, to use that. I like to avoid using using those means during an off season training block because uh, they'll dampen the the uh, adaptation response from training for the athlete and and actually cause them to not get all the speed and strength gains that they that they could because their body isn't isn't thinking that it needs to you know really uh, send nutrients to the muscles and, and help them repair and, and use all the energy for that because it's it's being um, artificially done through the, the use of uh, passive recovery means. But in season, it, at that point, it really doesn't, it's it's really not a priority of how uh, strong your athlete's getting or how fast your athlete's getting. The highest priority in season needs to be placed on their ability to practice well every day and then, and then play great on, on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Um, so passive recovery means in season and during training camp need to be used as frequently as possible um, so that your athlete feels good to practice every day and, and you're getting the most out of that. And I also want to suggest that you rotate the passive recovery means you use with your athletes because just like any training stimulus, the body will, will adapt to doing the same thing over and over and over. So maybe you know one week you use ice baths and the next week you use uh, contrast showers and just keep rotating back and forth between those uh, those two passive recovery modalities to help your athletes improve. But you know, practice is the only irreplaceable thing in the in the athlete's training program, so you need to treat it as such. But of course, we we don't want to get into into high intensity practice periods and just totally forget about our training either. So check out the Juggernaut Football Manual. Click the link on the screen right now, and you get a lot more in depth information about the the way that I adjust uh, physical training for the for the athlete during spring football, summer football, training camp, and in season, plus a 48-week training plan to take you guys all the way through the year, help you build an unstoppable team.